Okay, we're going to extend some pressure into something that, something that you already know about pressure, and that's the pressure due to a fluid. With a gas, the gas particles are moving around very fast. We know that's from Brownian motion. They have more kinetic energy, so they're moving faster and smacking into walls of the container. Now, it's just like a collision with a wall. So if you have a brick wall and you throw a tennis ball against it, then remember that Newton's um, third law sort of says that the, the ball will feel a force um, towards it, but the wall will also feel the same force away from it. Combining um, some things we know about collisions, okay, so a collision, um, the force of a collision, okay, so force of a collision, um, is equal to the rate of change of momentum in the collision, okay? So change of momentum, what is that? Well, if you think about what you need, momentum must have uh, mass, and then you must have a change in velocity, final minus initial, and you divide that by time to give the rate. Okay, so um, as these things collide in here, they've got a velocity, collide off the wall, and you multiply by the mass and the time it takes, you can get a force. Pressure, so we've got our force, pressure is equal to force over area, so because there's a force due to these um, molecules hitting the walls and bouncing off, then there must also be a pressure, because there is an area. If you think about it, the size of the pressure will be proportional to the mass of the objects, and also the um, velocity. You could also say that's sort of the kinetic energy as well. Okay, now kinetic energy is related to temperature. So the higher the temperature, the greater the velocity or the mass, and higher the um, rate of change of momentum, and higher the force, higher the pressure. Okay. If you bring the area down, in other words, get the same velocity particles into a smaller cube, okay, then the area here will be decreasing but the pressure then would increase for the same rate of change of momentum. Pressure in a fluid, if we've got some sort of um, object here, okay, then the weight of everything in this fluid, given using the density part of it, pushing down on this area, so the force pushing down on that area would create pressure. So what's the definition of pressure? P equals F over A force per unit area. Remember that. Weight due to a mass M of the fluid and the gravitational field. So, <clears throat> what's the weight of this fluid? Well, if we know the mass and the gravity <coughs> is just W equals mg. We're going to substitute formula 2 into formula 1 for the force. Okay, Remember, this is a force, so we're going to put that into that equation there for force. So what we get um, is pressure equals mass times gravity divided by area. Now we can relate the mass of a, volume of a fluid to the density and volume of the fluid, so mass equals density times volume. Now we're going to put that this equation here for mass into that one there. So pressure equals density times volume times gravity divided by area. Okay. And substituting here, let's say area and height. So it could also be equal to density, that's a row, um, area times height times gravity, all divided by area, you cancel the areas and then you can get rho g h. So there's a formula that will tell you, due to the height of a fluid, what the pressure will be at the bottom. Okay, Now it's independent of area. So if you were standing there and you had a large head 
or a small head, you would have the same atmospheric pressure pushing down on your head because the height of the gas above your head is the same. Okay. Up thrust, we know that the weight of a fluid displaces equal to the weight of a floating object. That's Archimedes. However, where does this force come from that will balance the weight of an object? So if we had an object here and it's floating, oh, let's give that some colour, in some water, okay, then if you think about it, the weight of this object does not disappear. Okay, it's still there, there's still gravity, because remember it's mass times gravity, there's still gravity underwater, and there's still a mass underwater, so weight does not change. What there is though, is there is a force that is going upwards, okay, and this force going upwards is called up thrust. And if your up thrust equals your weight, then you will float. Okay, if the up thrust does not equal your weight, in other words, if the up thrust is less than your weight, then you sink. Okay, let's try that again. You'll sink. If it's the other way, then you'll actually pop up okay, higher. So, where does the up thrust come from? comes from the difference in pressure at the top and the bottom of the fluid. Because remember, this column of fluid here, of height h, will have a certain pressure at the bottom, and it'll be higher than the pressure at the top. Okay, why is that? Because of this formula here. Pressure equals rho g h. The greater the column of fluid above the point, so let's say that point there, we look at the height of the column above it is higher than the height of the column above there. In fact, a zero at the top. So there is greater pressure at the bottom of this object submerged in this fluid than there is at the top. And that difference in pressure will... Um, give you a, di a difference in force because remember pressure equals force over area so pressure is directly related to force in other words pressure is proportional to force so it's this formula here the pressure equals rho g h which tells you that there is a difference in pressure at the bottom of the object and that's submerged in a liquid sorry or, or a fluid than the pressure at the top and if you think about it If you think about it, then we are standing here in a fluid, okay, on the surface of the earth, and it's a gas, okay, so air is a fluid, okay. So the top of your head might have 10 kilometers of air above it, and the top of your, the bottom of your feet might have 10 kilometers plus the 1.8 meters of a six foot person. So there is, when you use pressure equals rho g h, this height is larger at the bottom. So there is a greater pressure at the bottom. Now this difference in pressure is tiny, so the difference in force is tiny. So you won't actually know about up thrust when you're standing in on the surface of the earth. But underwater... underwater the air, there is a difference and that is the density it is 1000 times greater so the effect is a thousand times greater so the difference in pressure will be a thousand times greater